Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Donovan Daniel, and I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions for Multicultural Recruitment here at IUP. Welcome to our second of three Diversity Series Facebook Live events. I want to thank you for taking some time to be a part of our community this afternoon. We're going to be meeting with several students, faculty, and staff, and just talking about that topic of community, how IUP uh, is intentionally and, and, and uh, effort, putting a lot of effort towards building community with and for its students. Uh, again, I'm joined by my colleague, Kiani Lozada, uh, who's going to be running our social media today. Um, and as people were chiming into the conversation, if you have any questions, you can feel free to put it into the comments. Kiani will also be posting some questions for people. And so, Kiani, anything you want to say to, to the audience as we're waiting for people to tune in? Uh, let us know what year you graduated, if you're currently a student. Um, if you post anything that re is relevant to what we're saying, let us know and you'll get a shout out. Absolutely. So we're really excited about this. One of the great things that we're trying to accomplish uh, with this initiative is we understand that not all of our admitted students are able to visit the campus. This is your chance to be able to talk to people who are on the campus and get to get a feel for our community. And so without further ado, I'm actually going to invite uh, some of the people that are part of our community as you all are coming into the, the feed now. So with that, my first two guests are coming in. Good afternoon. Hi. Hi. Hey, hello. Hey. So we have here Amira McCone and Irvin Rivera, and they'll give you a little information about what they do here on campus, what their role is here. I'll let you start first. Okay, I'm gonna say it's Amira Macon. Macon. Um, <laughs> um, my name's Amira Macon. I'm a senior here at IUP. I'm graduating in May. I'm a criminology major, English minor. Um, I am also the president of the IUP National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. That's the NAACP. Um, and I'm also the committee chair for um, health as well uh, in the NAACP and I'm also a community service learner work study student at the Indiana Borough Police Department. All so. right, look forward to talking about that. Mm -hmm. Irvin, what, what are you doing for our community? My name Irvin Rivera. I am the Assistant Director of Admissions for Latino Recruitment here at IUP and um, I also, I wear many hats. Um, being here at IUP, I serve as the advisor for a few organizations on campus, uh, specifically uh, Latino organizations on campus. Um, very involved in the com in the community, raising family in this community. So, um, yeah, definitely, I can speak on a lot of things surrounding the uh, Latino community um, and experiences around that. Okay, so I'm glad that you both are a part of our community discussion and a part of our community overall. Kiani, uh, who's tuning in so far? Do we have anybody that's introduced themselves yet? Oh, we do have somebody shouting out their son. Stephanie says that Marcus Rivera will be visiting IEP this weekend during the MVP weekend program that we yes, have here at IEP. Will. Yes, he will. And we have someone named Steve who is thanking us for doing this uh, Facebook Live series. So right. that's well, it so far. Well, you're welcome, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So as more people are tuning in, again, if you have any questions, please put it in the comments so we can try to address them as the live feed's going on. But let's talk about community. Uh, Amira, you mentioned your internship. Uh, I hate to jump right into that, but it <laughs> sounded so exciting. So what are you doing for the Indiana Borough Police? Okay, so basically what I do is I'm the second of uh, two people that have taken, taken this opportunity to start building a liaison between the police, the local police in Indiana, as well as um, the African American community, whether that's the Indiana Borough Police specifically or state police. Um, or IUP police or the sheriff's office because we have all four of those local law enforcement um, surrounding our campus. Um, I'm basically there to you know help build a relationship because there's a lot of animosity right now um, with the black community and um, any community of color actually as you know there, there's a lot of animosity that we're trying to fix right now because we need you know more people of color in Indiana and what's happening is people aren't feeling as comfortable coming to Indiana because of this animosity that we have. So we're just trying to build, you know, a relationship between, you know, people people of color and uh, the local police departments. So that's interesting. You mm -hmm. see a lot like of that, shows yeah. coming mm -hmm. out. I know that uh, Fox is getting ready to come out with a show about this very topic and there's a lot of documentaries, uh, movies that are, are talking about just the animosity that's perceived between authority figures or in this case police officers and minority communities. Certainly there's a lot of angst in the country for many other reasons. We're not going to necessarily get into a political discussion right, right now. but. I'm, I'm excited about the fact that you're taking this opportunity to meet with police at a time mm -hmm. when you said there's a lot of anxiety and fear. 
what were your initial thoughts about being in this opportunity and and what are your thoughts now about the borough like how has that changed over the time of the internship <laughs> it's definitely changed a lot um i actually wrote, wrote a paper on this many papers on this actually but <laughs> um originally um i had my own negative feelings toward police um i feel as though that you know the media has had a really negative influence on policing today and that has shaped my experience or my views of policing um, also some some family and friend experiences that I've seen as well um, so I went to the station I wasn't very sure what I was gonna do I was like nobody's gonna like me um, mm -hmm. I was like everybody's gonna think you know that I'm there to basically stop the party if you know what I mean and I don't I didn't you know I didn't want to be put in that position but I decided to um, put myself out there, take myself out of my comfort zone and, you know, see really what goes on in the Indiana Borough Police Department because I feel mm -hmm. as though a lot of students had, you know, thought that many of the police officers here were out to get students. Um, and as I continued my semester there last semester, I, I be began to believe that this isn't true. Um, in, my, in my view, I feel as though that, um, you know, many, most of the police officers there, you know, do their job well. Mm -hmm. um, there, I haven't seen personally any discrimination um, in the police department, I feel as though many of the officers are there to do their job and, you know, to keep us safe here at the university. Um, and to mention that um, I personally feel as though we are safe with the officers that we have here in our community. There's not so many that a lot of people are used to, but um, the officers here are really, you know, they're really dedicated to their job to keeping, you know, the IUP and the Indiana community safe. So well, That's really exciting. I, I know that one of the factors that goes into selecting a college or university, especially in this day and age, is how safe a student perceives or actually is going to be on a campus. So it's exciting to know that your perception of the police department improved over time um, and that you were given the opportunity to use some of your criminology background in this internship. Uh, you know, we hope that more students follow in your footsteps. Like you said, you were the second right. uh, person to do it. So we're hoping for a third and a fourth, and it could be you watching today. Maybe you're going to be a criminology student and you want to follow in Miss Macon's footsteps. <laughs> and so in doing that, you may have an opportunity to work with Indiana Borough Police or many other things. We offer 4,000 internships for students annually. Uh, that that, that, that ex expands our community you know, greatly because students are going to different states, different countries, working for different employers, maybe even then their major, just to expand their horizon. So really excited that you're taking advantage of that. Kiani, I'd be curious if we could ask the audience what internships they had. Maybe it'd be good to see you know, how they expanded their community uh, by doing internships. And we'll talk to Irvin some, but let's, let's see what they're saying about their internships. So tell us, what internships did you do when you were in IUP if you studied here? Or maybe what internship opportunities you hope will have when you come here as a prospective student? Irvin, we talked a little bit about safety, talked about the community. You raise a family here, you work here. Tell us about your experience having joined the IUP community back in 2012. Right? Yeah. So I am I moved to Indiana from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, and I, I always, I mention Lancaster and people automatically assume Amish country and everything. <laughs> there is a city in Lancaster. It's a very growing city. I love my city. So shout out to anyone who uh, is from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, but that's where I grew up. I was born and raised in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, a very strong Latino community there. Um, and in my high school, I, I want to say it was close to 50% Latino. Um, and just very diverse, and that's what I was used to. I was always used to diversity, um, being around such a diverse group of people, and I moved over here. I got the job at IUP, which I am so excited, still excited about. I love mm -hmm. what I do, um, but it is a very different community, um, and I'm raising my kids. I have three kids, a four-year-old daughter and um, uh, two nine-month-old uh, twin boy and girl, so, um, you know, and I feel comfortable raising my kids around this community just because I am being involved in this community. I go to I go to church in the local community. I've been to a few different churches, um, you know. And while it's not quite like home, mm -hmm. I'm making it my home, and my family has adjusted pretty well to it. I mean, this is what my daughter, my four-year-old daughter, knows. You know what I mean? Um, but beyond that. Um, you know, the Latino community on campus has also become part of my extended family, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I know before I got here, um, there was there wasn't things like a multicultural Greek council. Um, and that's one thing that I can honestly say me, my wife and I um, 
kind of helped bring to this campus, bring a part of some of the organizations that we were a part of. Yeah. Um, and and so um, I, I currently uh, advise the um, Latino student organization on campus. Um, and I'm excited next week, actually, or no, this weekend, they'll be um, going to Boston, Massachusetts for wow. a um, conference, the Domin National Dominican Student Conference in Boston. So um, that's exciting for them. Next year, yeah. we hope to take um, Lasso to Puerto Rico. You know, I mean, so they're doing great things and the organization, okay. I know, and right? Adult, <laughs> adult traveler, I'll go with you. I, I'm trying, you know. <laughs> but, 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 yeah. but those are just some of the great things that we're doing here. And, and I feel like when people are coming from all different places, the way IUP is, you know, I mean, we here we have people representing 48 different states, 63, diff over 63 different countries throughout the world, two U.S. territories, you know, that's, that's very important and that adds on to that globalized experience that yeah. students are, are are having here you know and just like I said being being advisor for some of these organizations it helps me connect with these students and, and some of these students have like I said become part of my extended family um, you know my fraternity brothers within Lambda Sigma Upsilon Latino Fraternity Incorporated my wife's a, a part of the Cussies Chi Upsilon Sigma which I know we have someone here from that organization as well um, and you know that just builds on and just adds on to that sense of community, that sense of family that we have here. So we feel that sense of support. So I get the impression that, Amira, with you doing your internship and taking that step, even though there was some discomfort, Irvin, with you getting involved with multiple organizations, that really, if we take the first step, there's a greater sense of community, there's a greater sense of uh, support, maybe safety, uh, that comes from it. So would you strongly encourage, I guess I know what your answer is going to be, but yeah. would you strongly encourage our prospective students to take that step and maybe, uh, maybe what's, what's some advice you want to leave them with before you or leave our set? What's some advice you give them as, as to how they can take the step to build community? Do you want to start that one? I'll go, okay. I'll go. <laughs> um, well, I personally think that it's very important to get involved um, as soon as you get here because yeah. there's so many organizations on campus and off campus that you can get involved in. Um, I made the mistake as a freshman by not getting involved. I was actually on um, Voices of Joy as like my freshman year, but I didn't feel as though um, I didn't feel as though I was in enough. Mm -hmm. I was just singing on a church choir. That's how I felt. And then after that, um, I was like, I need to find something that's for me. Um, and not to get me wrong, I am very involved in my church and I'm very involved um, do you go you somewhere know, in the community now? Yes, I go to Victory Christian Assembly. Oh, okay. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's a very student-oriented student, student -oriented church, but that's where I found my home at. This is, that's right. my community. Um, however, I found, is the, I, I found it important for me to get involved in the community um, re religiously as well as get involved on campus. There's so many organizations. When I found out there was a hula hoop club, I was <laughs> like, there's something for everyone here. So, I mean, and that's really important. I, I mean, it helped me, you know, better myself. Um, with the joining the NAACP, originally I, I didn't plan on going as far as being president. It mm -hmm. kind of just happened, yeah. and um, that you know that helped me get where I am today. I feel as though I've had so many networking opportunities. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people have been saying I was famous in Indiana. I don't I don't, I don't feel that way though. But I feel as though you know um, I've been offered a lot of positions. I've been offered a lot of um, jobs. Actually, they want me to apply to Indiana Borough Police Department. Um, there you go. They also want me to. Um, they also want me to. If I decide not to, you know, apply here, but they think I should branch out. Um, if I decided to go into law enforcement, which I'm not quite sure yet, but um, I feel as though just taking that step and joining the NAACP gave me the opportunity that I have now, and I feel like as though like every organization has certain opportunities, like. Lasso, you said, is going to Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. I want to go to Puerto Rico. So, you know, um, <laughs> it's definitely like important to find that organization that you really can click with someone with because it, it helps you. Um, it helps you not only like personally, but it helps you with your academics. Um, you always have somebody to run to when you're like stressed. Mm -hmm. And I, I've been stressed. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's definitely important to get involved on campus. So, Irvin, before you answer that question, giving them advice, I uh, want to make sure we don't forget, because we asked them about internships. Mm -hmm. So what internships did you hear about? Did anybody share about their experiences yeah. when they were here at IUP? We have one person here who is Savannah Thorpe, and she says, I interned at a NGO in Ghana at the Center for Democratic Development studying voting rights in Africa. Awesome. And yay, Lancaster. 
Hey. <laughs> hey, Lancaster. And um, we also have Jim Ursus say, hey, Irvin, good to see you. So you got a personal oh, shout-out. Right. There you go. <laughs> All right. Personal shout-out for Irvin. That's real good. So um, as we're getting ready to talk to Irvin about his advice for you, oh, another question I'd like to throw out to the community is how do you define community? Because uh, I, I think that's really big. We're, we're using that term a lot. We're using it for different contexts here. But how do you, as our audience, define community? Irvin, before you leave, what's your advice for how a student can build community here at IUP? Well, just like what Amir said, um, I think it's important to build that connection as soon as you get here. Mm. You know, uh, find people, because as an incoming freshman, you're going to find other incoming freshman <laughs> students who are just as lost and just, you know, eager to join something and something that's relevant to who they are, something that speaks out to to their either culture or their personality, you know. Um, people want to leave their marks behind and the best way to do that is by getting involved. Wow. You know what I mean? And if you can't find that organization, start it. Be the first one to bring that organization here. You know, if you feel that there's a need that's not being addressed, then address it because those are the things that um, will only improve our community, will only make our community that much better. You hear, you hear that phrase all the time, you know, be the change you want to be and that is so, that is, you be the change you want to see mm -hmm. and that is so true anywhere that you go. Mm -hmm. um, and while it may not be the perfect community here, it's something that for me, the thing that's keeping me here is the fact that I know that my presence here is making a difference, that I know that I can help be that change, that I can spearhead someone or even just spark an idea in someone else um, to, to do something great, you know, and, and, and to bring forth something that maybe this community hasn't seen. That's exciting. Well, folks, as they're getting ready to leave, if you have any questions about uh, the community or about Myra's internship or Urban's involvement, be sure to leave it in the comments. We'll make sure that they get the information, the questions, and they'll be the answer. And uh, if you want to start a new organization, come see Irvin because he's an advisor <laughs> to like every organization yeah. on campus and <laughs> might be able to help you. But thank you for being a part of our no community. All right. And Thanks we'll for having to us later. today. Yeah, absolutely. Irvin or Irvin? That's Urban. You're Keani. Keani, what has been the response to our question about how do people define community? Have we gotten anybody that's answered that so far? Not quite yet, but I have a feeling that some are coming very soon once okay. we have our new panelists. Here. All right. Well, we'll introduce them and then we'll see what's going to happen. So, we have two new panelists here. You're not Irvin and you're not Amira. You're Guadalupe and you're Miles. And so, tell them a little bit about what your role is on campus and uh, maybe what year you came here. How about that? Sure, uh, my name is Guadalupe Ortiz Cortez. I came here uh, fall 2013. Okay. I am a student of the Honors College. I am a McNair Scholar. I am um, a sister of CAPS on Sigma National Asteroid Incorporated, and I'm a student planner at the Indiana County Office of Planning and Development. Wow. So, not sleeping is what. Right, no out. sleep. Okay, sense. hashtag no sleep. You may be just as busy or involved, we'll say, when you come to IUP. Miles, tell them a little bit about yourself. Sure, so I'm actually a recent IUP graduate. Uh, I was a double major in international studies and Asian studies with a minor in Pan-African studies. I'm also the founder of True Culture University. Okay. Wait, so you said a recent graduate? Yes. Like, you're not here anymore? I still am on the campus. Okay, yeah. all right. So then, wait, that means you have one of these, right? You're an alumni of IUP? I am alumni. <laughs> hey, let's put that on the table because I'm an alumnus too. And wow. Kiani, you're getting ready to graduate as well, right? Yeah, this, uh, this semester in May. May 13th is when it all happens. <laughs> it's really important to us in the IUP admissions office. We don't want to get you to IUP. We want to get you through IUP. So we're looking for students that have that staying power. We're looking for students that are going to work really hard. Uh, I like to use this hashtag, and hopefully I'll make it popular here at IUP, but admit to success. We want to admit you to your success and help you to find it here. Mm -hmm. So congratulations on graduating. Thank Guadalupe, you. I know you like right on your way. And Kiani, mm -hmm. May 13th. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit. Uh, about community. I asked the, the group and I'm waiting for some answers from them, but I want to hear your answers as to how do you define community? What does that mean to you? Sure. You want to go? All right. Uh, I think that community for the most part for me is really just having that group of people that you feel like you can be yourself around, that group of people you feel like you can kind of take off those multiple masks. You know, everybody has social masks that they, they wear, but I think as you get more intimate with different groups that you feel like you can kind of see yourself in, you take those masks off and you allow yourself to be a bit more vulnerable. And I think that, you know, part of the human experience is having that vulnerability with others. Um, and I think that having that sense of vulnerability kind of increases that sense of community as well. Mm, okay. 
Okay, Guadalupe, what do you think? What does it mean to be in a community, or what's community mean to you? Uh, for me, a community is a group of people that um, help each other to reach a common goal and also help each other to achieve their potential by um, sharing their different skills and knowledge. I think definitely helping now, being vulnerable, and yeah. assisting each other just achieve the highest possible. I almost hear family, right? I, yeah. I hear family, but maybe in a broader context, because obviously when we think of family, uh, we think of very, very intimate relationships. But with this community piece, it sounds like you have some familial aspects. You know, you're my brother, you're my sister, and, and, and we have some similarity in that we're all IUP alum or, or students. Uh, we have this experience in that we're all living in Indiana, PA. Uh, we, we all have uh, similar opportunities, we hope. And if we don't have opportunities that we share, we need to do stuff to make sure that everybody gets the same opportunities and advantages. So uh, I like it. Thank you for being a part of our community. Definitely. Kiani. Uh, I'm curious what you think about it, and then maybe we'll see if somebody's answered it. What do you think community means? I think to me personally, community means finding a group of people that you feel comfortable with, you know, mm -hmm. that you're not going to be judged or anything, that you feel comfortable with, essentially. So people that, you know, share the same interests as you, or you all are moving towards the same goals or have the same aspirations. So I think that, to me, is what a community is. Hmm. What are we hearing from the group here. What do you think community means? Not quite yet, but we do have a lot of shout outs on here okay, with well, Tammy who says nice yeah. job to all of our panelists and everyone okay. here. And the Alumni so Association also saying that they're IUP proud and IUP alumni as well. Awesome, awesome. I heard a great interview. Um, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say occasionally I watch The View. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I was watching The View. Uh, it was an interview that was done last year. And it was the rapper Killer Mike. I mean, not necessarily them promoting Killer, but rapper named <laughs> Killer Mike. And he was talking about his understanding or his definition of social justice, which I really love. I'm going to paraphrase it because I didn't memorize it. But he was talking about how if someone were to approach me in, in defining social justice and to say, I'm going to give you every right, every advantage, everything that you ever sought for as a people group, and you could have it, but no one else could. Do you want it? Wow. And, and, and him saying, you know, if he were to represent all African Americans, he'd be like, Thank you for the opportunity, but no thanks. Mm. To him, he thought social justice, and I'll expand that to say community, is to say that I want success for myself, but I also want it for everybody else, and I don't want it at the expense of you or you or you, right? I, I want it with you, but not in spite of you mm -hmm. uh, or, or, or in place of you. And so I think that's really cool that with all of us having very different understandings of community, the one thing I think we're sharing is we recognize we're in it together, right? right? Now, I see letters on your shirt. Definitely. <laughs> so, and, and I know that we all have some common ground here right, about right. a certain aspect of the IUP community. So yeah. tell me about the organization you're a part of. Well, sure. One of the many. Yeah, sure, sure. So this is Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. And this is actually the first black Greek ledger collegiate organization uh, ever founded. It was founded in 1906. Um, and I actually was inducted into my chapter in fall 14. So that's going on about three years ago. So I'm feeling a little bit older. But we also have active members and active brothers on campus. Yeah. As a 30-year-old, I always love when recent alums are like, I feel older. <laughs> it's like, really, what does that mean for me? What does that mean for the people watching? But, you know, it's okay. But a part of Alpha, that's great. So, Guadalupe, what organization are you a part of? I, I'm a sister of Capstone Sigma National Asteroid Incorporated, and um, I became a sister just last semester. Okay. So, what has your experience been like? You, you just joined, but have you appreciated the opportunity so far? Yes, I love being a sister here on campus. Uh, it has given me a lot of opportunities to um, reach other students through workshops and events, as well as be a leader in the community. Okay, how long has the organization been here at IUP? Uh, since fall of 2014. Wow, so very re basically around the time you crossed that year, yeah. <laughs> you got to coming on, on the yard, as they put it. I'm trying right. to stay current here. Yes. So, okay, all right, so you recently came on here. Congratulations for joining. You know your organization to this community. Thank you. Kiani, you're a part of a group too, right? Yes, I am. <laughs> um, my group was also founded on campus in the fall of 2014. Um, I am a founding sister of the Atitlan chapter of Mu Sigma Upsilon Sorority Incorporated. Mm -hmm. So a, a lot a lot going on in 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, for myself, I'm you know a proud member of the Red Ink Army or Menaga Christian Fraternity Incorporated and we helped bring the campus uh, this chapter back in 2012, the Benea chapter of MOG is uh, one of four in the country. So we're a little younger than all of you. I mean, originally we were just in Texas, but now we're in PA. And so it's exciting to be on the yard with y'all and to be a part of the community. What does it mean to be a part of the Greek life community, or I guess in my case, the Roman letter community? But what is it uh, like to be a part of the Greek letter community here on campus? 
I mean, I think that is something that's very powerful. Uh, you kind of, you know, as we were talking about what community means to us before, it kind of is all those things, you know, but you kind of find it with different people because you, you have your immediate brothers or sisters and you, you form a very deep bond with them. You kind of are able to be yourself with them and have these common goals that you're pursuing on the yard as you're trying to create things and make things happen. But then also, outside of your immediate organization, I think that you also have those common strands and common commonalities with other Greek organizations as well. And I think that they would agree that it's kind of, you know, a certain mindset that I think we all kind of share and that we all kind of have grown upon and, and it's go, and goes from there. Real cool, real cool. Yeah. So what is it like being a part of the Greek organizations on campus? I mean, do you feel like you work well with other organizations? Um, I think we do help each other out, we do support each other, we show up at each other's events and we collaborate to create events and workshops together. That's cool because I find at certain campuses you see a competition going on between different organizations. It's good to see that you all celebrate each other, that you're excited when organizations come on campus, that you're supportive. Um, and so maybe that's something you're interested in. For any of our alums tuning in, were you a part of a Greek organization or any organization on campus? Tell us about your affiliations on campus. And if you're a prospective student and you have any questions for our panelists here that were a part of Greek organizations or you know, uh, currently a part of them, let, let's have them. Let's have them. Let's let them, let them rip. <laughs> Kiani, what's going on in our comment board right now? All right. So in regards to the definition of community, we have Deborah Valentine Gray who says community is a group of people with common goals and share mutual respect. Mm. We also have the Indiana County Tourist Bureau, so speaking of community, uh, who say, thanks for sharing. We enjoy being part of the IUP community, enjoy being part of the IUP community and try our best to reach out to your members and inform them of community opportunities. Really exciting. And we have a question here from Brennan Rostelli. He says, how can students who are not involved that are trying to become involved feel welcomed into different clubs and organizations? What? Yeah. I think we can cover this. There's a day in the what's, fall what's it called? and in the spring. Oh, it's an IUP day. IUP day. IUP day. IUP day. IUP day. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. So, uh, where do we do IUP day and what, what does that mean? What is IUP day? Well, during the fall semester, we have IUP day and during the spring semester, we have uh, yeah. winter warm up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and different organizations <laughs> get together at the um, KCAC at the Kobachik um, Complex and center yeah. um, and um, they table for their organization and they tell you about their organization so you have maybe 67 organizations that you can go through the tables talk to their members and possibly join one of them and they're always very welcoming they usually have a lot of snacks and a lot of performances as well gotta have snacks when it's college students involved we know you're hungry when you come here we're gonna make sure we have snacks tell us a little bit about not so much IUP day, but are you familiar at all, Miles, with Crimson Connect? Can you talk to the students about how they can get involved digitally with the sure, different organizations? Sure, sure, sure. So Crimson Connect, uh, if I am correct, is pretty much an online database of all the different organizations on campus. You can go there, find contact information for the different uh, leaders in the organizations. You can find uh, when they have their meetings. And uh, also, so if you go online, you can kind of pretty much see everything. So if you like hula hooping, uh, I think as someone else said, you can Google that or, or search it on the site, on the Crimson Connect, and find that there's a hula hoop club so it pretty much just gives you access to everything you know right at your fingertips hashtag hula hoop maybe we can, <laughs> if we can get that started make it know. viral make it viral yeah so crimson connect allows you to connect digitally iup day winter warm-up allows you to connect in person and really just going around your residence hall you'll find flyers all over the place i remember being a ca we talked about housing last time and being it being a ca we had to put up flyers for the different organizations when events were happening if they got the marketing materials out to the residence halls you could see it all over the hallways plastered with opportunities to connect so you really could be a part of community if you want to so that's exciting uh any other things we want to touch on before we switch to our next set of panelists we do have one more here on the subject of working together with different people in classrooms and things yeah. uh we have jim ursus who says that he's working on his second master's here at iup his first master's was in the aect and it is a great program and the way the classes were structured allowed us to work through all of our classes together with the same people these were people from around the world, which I would not have met without this program. Wow. So having the opportunity to work and struggle together through our classes was such a big part of my experience here. And you said AECT, as mm -hmm. in Adult Education and Communications Technology? I would guess so. As in my <laughs> master's, 2014, Jim. <laughs> Jim, 
Love you, buddy. I don't even know you, but you're part of the community. That's awesome. So a lot of ways to connect, whether it be academic, whether it be organizations, whether it be digitally. We have so many ways for you to get a part of our community. Folks, I'd love to talk to you forever. But we're going to get our last two panelists on, so thank you for being a part of the IEP thank community. Right, thank, thank you for you. being a proud alum of the IEP community. Yeah, yeah. And we'll talk to you later. Have right. a great day. Thank you. Thank you. So, Kiana, I think we need to ask some more questions. I think that uh, it'd be good, as we're getting ready to get to our next panelist, uh, to talk about maybe some concerns they have about finding an organization. So we talked about how you can find one, maybe some concerns they have, maybe some fears about joining a group. You know, so mm -hmm. let's talk about that. What are your concerns about joining an organization, and what are some of the things we may be able to answer to help you out with that? And I'm sure you could make that distill a little better than what I said. Our Hi. next panelists are here. Hello. How we doing, lady? Pretty doing good. Well? I'm so glad that you waited for us. I understand we <laughs> had you waiting as uh, other panelists were going through, but we wanted to save uh, your your perspective for last because we said when we were inviting people on Facebook and when we were inviting people on, uh, through email, we had sent out emails to admitted students that we help at IUP to build communities with and for students. And mm -hmm. what I added to that was locally and abroad. Mm -hmm. I love what you all represent because you represent study abroad, international education, students coming here and our students mm -hmm. going there, and just showing how the IEP community is a lot bigger than just Indiana PA. So why don't we introduce you uh, to the audience, go ahead and say your name and your title, and then let's dig in about how we build community here at IEP. Okay. All right. Hi, I'm Dr. Lydia Rodriguez, and I'm a professor of Spanish in the Department of Foreign Languages. I'm also the director of the Valladolid Spain, Spain uh, Study Abroad, as well as the director of the Latin American Studies Program. Great. And I'm Dr. Michelle Petrucci, and I'm the Associate Vice President for International Education and Global Engagement and the Executive, Assist, uh, Executive Director, oh, so many titles, uh, of the American Language Institute, which is our Intensive English Program. Awesome, awesome. Good. So before we dig in, uh, I want you to think, I'm going to check on the comments real fast, <laughs> but think, how would you define community? Let that brew for a second. What do you mm. think community means to you? What, 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 what's the, the fan saying? What, what, what All we, right. What we have so we have another question here from okay. Christina, and she asked, what do you think attracts those from around the world to come to Indiana, mm -hmm. considering it isn't the most populated or exciting place one can go? <laughs> that question goes <laughs> to you, Michelle. Sure. <laughs> sure. So we'll, that one. we'll answer that okay. one. And make like, make sure we remember that. Like, why? So we're going to get to you. Why right. would somebody <laughs> want to come to Indiana? I ask myself that all the time. Uh, you know, because I, I didn't know what I was getting into, and I've fallen in love with the place mm -hmm. since then, but I didn't really know anything about Indiana at first. So it'd be great to hear about that from you. So, what do you all think community, community. means? Oh, we're going to start with the community. Yeah. Oh, yeah. boy. Well, I think we've hashed it out here because it, there is even definitions. It comes from the Latin comunitas, mm -hmm. you know. And I love that because it really reflects going to Spanish, comunidad, you mm -hmm. know. And what is it? We commune together. And we've all been talk, touching mm -hmm. on that. Share, you get with a group of people yeah. that has the common interest mm -hmm. and common goals. So I inv invite everybody with the common interest to go to Spain, to Valladolid, mm -hmm. Spain, to go and commune with me <laughs> in Valladolid, Spain. <laughs> Michelle? Yeah, community, I agree. It's, yeah. it's, but I believe we all have multiple communities, mm -hmm. right? And then mm -hmm. some of them intersect, yeah. right. and some never really ever connect. But I think at, at Indiana and IUP, you can find those different communities. The hula hoop, right, you can right. also find your Greek life, you can find your religious community. You know, I like what you just said because I have, there's a uh, PhD student, he's in communications media, uh -huh. um, his first name is Rami, he's from, uh, I don't remember his last name. Egypt. From he's Egypt. from Egypt, <laughs> exactly. I was in a cohort with Rami. You know, he, he said, and I really liked what he said, he said, you know, he gave me the definition of what the community is, and it's basically what we've been saying. But he said, you don't have to belong to just one community. Mm -hmm. They, you can belong to many communities. Right. Absolutely. And you know, he gave, for example, you know, I belong to the PH. There's a PhD community, and what I mm -hmm. do there is I share, uh, you know, my research with other PhD mm -hmm. students. We talk about the programs, yeah. you know, on mm -hmm. campus. He says, but that's not just me, mm -hmm. you know. I also have my other communities, you know. Mm -hmm. And so you just mentioned, we, you know, those communities sometimes intersect. Correct, yeah. And sometimes they just don't. So, yeah, they may live yeah. parallel. So thanks, Rami. <laughs> yeah. I, I think we've seen that with our cast today. Yeah, I mean, Certainly absolutely. we see that in the greater IUP context, but we've had Greek letter organizations and had all the panelists be part of Greek letter organizations. 
organizations. Myself and Irvin Rivera, if you remember him, both working in the admissions office and trying to bring students not just mm -hmm. to IUP, but right. through IUP. I've worshipped with Amira at Victory Christian Assembly, and I've worked with uh, Miles over in the Center for Health and Wellbeing. I mean, like, just in the panelists, I've, I've had overlapping work, worship, uh, work again, right, school right. relationships with the panelists, and certainly we were working together mm -hmm. to, you know, I'm bringing the students in, and you're exposing them to experiences they may have not had otherwise. We're all in, in these different intersecting communities. It's definitely a beautiful understanding. Yeah, definitely, and I, this is yeah. just a little shout out to Savannah Thorpe, and also with Miles. Being here, I pulled up photos. Yeah. Uh, Miles and Savannah were both in Ghana last year, mm -hmm. and Dean Asamoah and I were able to go. The U.S. Embassy mm -hmm. was having a big conference, wow. and I was just looking at photos of the four of us, <laughs> yeah, and it was a wonderful experience, and to be able to see Miles and Savannah in country and the enthusiasm uh, for the country, for their mm -hmm. experience, it reignited me yeah. as, as well, mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. great to see Miles here well, and, and to hear yeah. Savannah there. And you spoke about Miles in Ghana, and something we didn't get to, and there's so much you got to talk about when it comes to community. Well, when Miles was in Ghana, I understand that he was exposed to the University of Ghana, right. and he started to work on an initiative called mm. True Culture University. Yeah, right. We were talking about it offset, and it's just all, all these different things that you can bring up. But he was talking about just understanding the the, the terminology of blackness mm -hmm. in different contexts. What it means to be a, a black man or black woman in Ghana is very different than what it means to be a black student here at IUP mm -hmm. or at Yale or at Harvard. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I understand it's like 15 universities working on this where they're contributing yeah, articles and data, mm -hmm. and Miles started the chapter here mm -hmm. so it's just really we could talk all day <laughs> about how community is built here right. for and with students but right. glad you shouted out miles and savannah yeah. <laughs> kiani what are we hearing on the board before we jump back in all righty so we have a question from stephanie reese Vera who says how is the outside community relationship with the university mm. do you all want to talk about that or outside could, can, could can, we, can can she clarify outside meaning that Indiana. Um, I would talking assume about it's yeah. outside Indiana um, area mm -hmm. or town. Uh -huh. so, so, what, what do you all think about that? I can answer that as a resident, but yeah. Yeah, we're all residents, right? <laughs> right, right, right. That's correct. So, what? Uh, repeat the question again. So, how is the outside community relationship with the university? So I would say that it's a positive one because if you see right, a lot well. in like, you know, student uh, newspapers and things like that, right. um, a lot of students and student organizations are always going out into the community mm -hmm. for right. volunteer work, right. you know. Well, you know, and here's another thing. It is positive because you even have discounts for IUP students, right. you the know, especially places. like yeah. at e Eaton Park, you know. <laughs> you know, and then it's not just for students, but right. for faculty, anyone that, that works here at IUP or that studies here. So, you know, that in itself right. shows positive. Uh, yeah. a positive uh, nature. Well, there. I think it's because the community members, I mean, I've been living here now as a student, as an alum, as a grad student, and now as a worker, but I've been living here since 2005. Mm -hmm. I think it's because the community recognizes the academic, or the economic impact mm -hmm. of the university being mm -hmm. here. Uh, we always tell people in presentations, and you'll be a part of this if mm -hmm. you come in fall 2017, but we represent 33% of the community when the students and the university's in full mm -hmm. activity, right. full board. Right. So 33%, right. one third of anybody living in Indiana is affiliated with IUP in one way or another. Uh, and that's not to speak to the many faculty and staff who chose to live here right, and not right, commute in. Right. I mean, I've been living uh, in the Chevy Chase community now for three years, mm -hmm. the community just mm -hmm. uh, north of the campus, mm -hmm. and uh, loved my experience mm -hmm. there. And, and, mm -hmm. and as some of the students said, connected with some of the churches around, mm -hmm. I have been a minister in the community. So we all have right. had different like exposures right. to the right. community. Michelle, you were going to say a little bit more about Well, I, mean, I, I actually moved here in 97, wow. which some of you have wow. not even born. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, it's when, okay. <laughs> it's okay. I moved here. I accepted a position at IUP after living overseas. I lived in Botswana and South Africa for about wow. seven years. And I came back to the United States, and I thought, oh, IUP, uh, I could be here for two or three years. Well, almost 20 years later, I'm here, and I'm married. I have a son. Yeah. And... I think for me personally, I've lived in cities and I've lived in cities in the states and cities overseas and small towns. Um, I like a university town. I think mm -hmm. it often has the culture, the right. the variety of restaurants. We've gotten more variety. Mm -hmm. It's not tons, but believe me, from '97, <laughs> right? It's grown. It's, it's grown. It's grown. Um, you know, affordable, safe, and so I think that goes to Christina's question also about 
what attracts. Mm -hmm. But I think number one for international students, it's a lot of art. We have a lot of long-standing relationships mm -hmm. with quality universities and governments overseas, mm -hmm. and it it really speaks to the faculty we have, mm -hmm. the academic programs we have. Mm -hmm the student support and services, mm -hmm. and the communities that they can find here, that they feel welcomed Absolutely. by people on campus and within the community. Absolutely. So um, I it's think... It's an enriching experience. It I really think, is. you know, like you say, the university towns, wherever there's a university town, uh, a university, there it's, it, I mean, it's that mixture of diversity and mm -hmm. the intellectual act right. part that goes into it. Um, speakers, right? Yeah, speakers, mm -hmm. that's correct. Lectures. You know, I think it's interesting. You know, coming from uh, the urban center of Philadelphia, being in high school, I think we're always talking a lot in education about how to learn, how to teach in urban contexts, how to reach urban uh, citizens. I don't think we talk as much. There's some people that do research in it, but we don't talk as much about being exposed to rural culture mm -hmm. and, and what it means to be a part of that. And so. We joke about how Indiana is a small town, but the reality is there's so much that the students can learn from being a part of Indiana, just mm -hmm. as much as Indiana gets to learn from the university right. being a part of it. Right. So there's a lot of there's a lot of cultural exchange if the student wants it. Right. Um, you know, I worship with people who look very different than me. I go to a church that's predominantly white. Mm -hmm. I'm one of maybe five or six African Americans there. Mm -hmm. At first, that was weird for me. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, y'all my brothers and sisters. I don't really care what you look like. You know, mm -hmm. and so I think. You know, whether it be church or going to the Y or working out in the community or going to the supermarket, you have chances to like connect and have that cultural right, change if right, you want it. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we put uh, put on um, spe you know speakers presentations, mm -hmm. especially we're bringing speakers from outside, whether yeah. they're coming from the other side, California, you know, yeah. the West Coast, or if they're coming from another country, mm -hmm. the first thing that you know we do obviously we we invite the entire IUP community here, mm -hmm. but in addition to that. We also invite it's free to the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've I've got, I've taken flyers to, yeah. for example, Tres Amigos, um, to these you know to many to many of these restaurants Absolutely. and just you know place them there and have people whomever that go in there to come and see our speaker presentation. Just Absolutely. off the top of my right. head, in the coming up, uh, the Department of Foreign Languages is hosting and Asian Studies are hosting a big Asian stu Asian Studies right. conference right. in the next two weeks and they're having a whole Asia week. We have a speaker, we have the ambassador from Ma of Mali coming mm -hmm. to IUP that. in the mm -hmm. middle of April. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have a, a professor from the University of Gondar in Ethiopia coming. Absolutely. Uh, he's a colleague of mine and he's coming to do some guest lectures. Yeah. And we have, I want to put a plug in, sure. International Unity Day, oh, April yes. 1st. Right, right. No, wow. that's good. April 1st, it's you free. Know, so, uh, <laughs> it's at the hub, tons of food. That's what you need to <laughs> say. This, see. All of this is free. Yeah. This, yeah. everything is free. So, Absolutely. I mean, why wouldn't you come? Yeah, I mean you unless, have unless, unless, unless you have free time. offends you. <laughs> I don't know why free would offend. There's a lot of opportunities to connect, and again, for students, most of it's covered with your student activity yep. fee. So you already pay for it. Right. It's like why not experience the community that's available to you? You talked about International Unity Day. Um, I, I was told by somebody earlier that we had a peace concert earlier this semester, oh, okay. where uh, it was interdenominational, interfaith, and the community was invited to connect with students for oh. that. Um, and one of the biggest events we do every year uh, is happening in April. I believe it's April 12th. We talked about it earlier with Take Back the Night, mm -hmm. where we're saying, you know what, there is a lot of issues going on on certain college campuses, sexual assault, and domestic violence, and uh, relationship abuse is, is very prevalent around the country, around mm -hmm. the world. Yeah. We're saying we're not going to tolerate it at IUP mm -hmm. anymore. And so we do this big march and rally uh, that, that ends in the hub every year. Right. I believe it ends in the KCAC now. It's been a couple oh, years since not. I've been a part of it. <laughs> but you have sometimes five, six hundred people, and it's definitely not all students. It's usually community members mm -hmm. as well. Now, I just want to say something before, you know, we end here, because mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're coming to our end here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I need to make to sure uh, to remind Get everyone ready, that, that Michelle here is from the Study Abroad, the Office of International Education, mm -hmm. and I deal a lot with Study Abroad. Yeah. So, and I, we're talking a lot about the community here, the Indiana community, the local community, Absolutely. but there's also, also that opportunity to create an opportunity, a, a community abroad. Absolutely. And that doesn't mean you cut off from where you came from. Right. That Absolutely. doesn't mean you forget everything. It doesn't, it means you are making new relationships, mm -hmm. you're making new friends, you're, you're sharing goals, similar goals 
um, abroad in interest. Absolutely. So I just want to bring that out yep. because right. again, Absolutely. that's you know that's that's our area. Yeah, that's you what know, we didn't even talk about. We, that. Exactly, <laughs> and so I just want to make sure <laughs> that we touch base. And of course, again, I want to make sure that people understand that Spanish is really the second language spoken here in the United States. So if they get an opportunity, you know, come visit me to go to Valladolid. Spain, or, and that's hashtag. Or come see our, my office. Uh, to go anywhere that. else in the world, <laughs> <laughs> including Spain. So hashtag IUP via delete. Again, you know, students really in, get, become very enriched with these programs. Not only you know with the Spain program, but anywhere that they go anywhere abroad. In the world. Yeah. So if a student's looking for a study abroad program, because we're getting ready to wrap up, yeah. but if a pro, if a student's looking for that program, looking to go somewhere else to experience community in another context, another continent, maybe. Where can they find your office? Office of International find... Education. It's on the ground floor of this building that we're in, Delaney Hall. Okay. And we have we have professional staff that do workshops uh, to talk to students about the opportunities, uh, what fits with them academically and financially, and they're all over the world. So there are opportunities in countries where English is not the first language, right. but yeah. right. they're the medium of instruction is in English. Okay. Also, you know, we have almost a thousand international students and scholars at IUP wow. from 60 okay. countries, so it's an opportunity to learn another language Michelle, too. Michelle, another with, point to, to bring out, sorry, sure. is that we have here, and you work with this also, your office is the national exchanges, where students have that opportunity. Actually, that's in a different office. Oh, is it? Okay. Yes. So, okay. But it's a great but opportunity. It's a, good opportunity. It's a great opportunity. Right. It's I'm a, with the, you. Yeah, with no, you. This yeah. Is, that is a great opportunity. I've had a lot of advisees do... Yeah. National know, student exchanges. National, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so the Career National Professional Development Exchange. Center does that. We talked about mm -hmm. that in the last segment uh, back in February twenty on um, February twenty second. And so you can go around the country, right. you can go around the state, you can go around this <laughs> town, you can go around the world. <laughs> IUP community, our reach is global. Uh, th th this is, is not limited right. to the one five seven zero one. That's the zip code here. When you come, you'll you'll recognize <laughs> that. But it's not just limited to that. Correct. Uh, I want to share your experience, and then we're gonna wrap up. Okay, so, you know, we talked about a thousand students from close. over 60 countries, <laughs> well, yep. close to a thousand, <laughs> over 60 countries. And, and so this university, you can have that global touch, even though you're not going outside of the Correct. country. Had an experience where one of our students in ILA, it's yeah. a program that we do, mm -hmm. we bring educators from around the world who want to learn a little bit about our pedagogy here at, mm -hmm. uh, in the States and want to experience school districts in contexts whether they be urban or rural or suburban mm -hmm. while they're here in the country. Um, the students came, I believe, sometime in January, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Mm -hmm. And so they've been having different experiences. I understand they're going to see a Pirates game later on oh. in April, and uh, mm -hmm. they, they just do all these great things. But I met one of the ILEP students on the same day that we had our Martin Luther King Freedom Rally mm -hmm. uh, back on back in January. Mm -hmm. And so we're walking around. Uh, my wife had spoke at the event. We were just in the community. We were just immersed with it. And we went to the supermarket. Got to get dinner, right? Got to eat. Right. And so we're there, and I see one of the ILEP students who happened to be at the Martin Luther King March and Rally, and then also just happened to be at Martin's. It's a small world, right? Mm -hmm. Small town. And so the student's from <laughs> India, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and he says to me, hey, I recognize you, he knew my wife from the ILEP program, and he says, how do I get home? <laughs> I just want to get to the bus. Mm -hmm. We couldn't really figure out the bus situation, so we just offered him a ride. Mm -hmm. We don't know him well, but it was just the fact that he was a part of the IUP community, it was like, hey, I just want to help you out. And so in the process of going home, he's encouraging my wife for her remarks at this event that she spoke at earlier that day, we're encouraging him about his participation at ILEP, and then he says, friend, will you come get tea with me? I thought that was strange. I don't really drink tea like that. But we went to go get some tea, and we exchanged yeah. snacks, and I got to hear about his culture, and he told me about his faith. He told me about his family, his yeah. children, about his country, and about his involvement with Island, why he did it, his career aspirations. We got to exchange life together. And it was so powerful being able to eat things that, because I'm not very adventurous, being able to eat things I've never seen before, taste that. things, <laughs> and, and got to have that experience. And yeah. afterwards, three hours later, right, after leaving his right, residence right, hall, right. I just felt like I knew so much about him because we took that first step. He took it by being comfortable to get in my car without knowing me. I took it by being comfortable enough to go into his residence hall without knowing him and by snacking on stuff that I didn't know. My wife was just, <laughs> my wife's knocking him back and I'm like, I don't know. But I, I really felt close to him and, and I think that that's what IUP offers to any of you that want to be a part of it. Yeah. So if you're looking for community, if you're looking for a university where we're going to build community with and for you, think about IUP.
take the Thank leap you for of coming. take the leap of faith because yes. that's yes. what you did. Yes. It's a challenge every step of the way, but you have to take Absolutely. that leap of faith. We're willing to take it. Are you? <laughs> we'll talk to you later. Have a great day. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye, Thank everyone. you, ladies. Thank you. Yeah.